I think that survivors, that this sorrow, this tragedy that we experienced is on the background of our life on a daily basis. I mean, we try very hard to lead normal lives and externally we look pretty normal, but internally this is an unending, impossible to attend to sorrow that will carry with us for the rest of our lives. My name is Felicia Carmeli. The name of my book is Across the Rivers of Memory. I was born on September the 25th, 1931. I was born in Romania in a resort town in the Carpathian Mountains. The name of the town was Vatra Dornei. My father owned the store and my mother helped out in the store, especially on Thursday when it was market day. My life changed in 1939 when the war started and we heard all kinds of rumors from what is happening in Poland and we weren't sure what's true and what is exaggerated. And, but we knew that something is going on, which is not. But in all the European countries, the Jews always said, it's not gonna happen to us. We are in better relations with the Christians around us. It's not gonna happen to us. But it happened to us all. The persecution of Jews became stronger. Like every day in front of City Hall, a, a youth of the fascist organization came out and he uh, poked the drums to get people together. And uh, he wrote an, an edict for the day, what Jews can or cannot do as of that day. So one day it was a curfew. We were only allowed uh, on the streets from 10 o'clock in the morning till six o'clock in, in the evening. At any other time, if we are caught on the street, we would be shot. No trial, no nothing. Uh, another day it was, we have to wear the yellow star. And this went on and on and on. Every day was something else that we were not allowed to do. So life became uh, more condensed every single day. I invented all kinds of games, which I played. But in retrospect, when I, when I thought back about it, when I was more, when I became an adult, I guess, um, I remembered scenes when some people were praying in the car, other people were uh, singing, other people were falling into a sleep or subconscious or, or unconsciousness, like sort of to, to because they couldn't take, take it in. Some people were banging with their fists at the, at the um, walls of the, of the cars. Um, it's just about everybody that did whatever to express the helplessness that we didn't know where we're going, when we're going, what, what for we're going. And, and it was a total feeling of, uh, I guess I, I can't find another word, but total helplessness. And not, not knowing where, where you are, who you are, what you are, whatever you were before has been wiped out. After three grueling days, we reached a little town on the shore of the river Dnester called Ataki. We were told that we would remain there for a few days. Once a thriving Jewish town, Ataki was bombed out and in total ruins. Not a single resident who had lived there before the war could be found. The soldiers led us out of the train and ordered us to go out and seek shelter, wherever we could find it. In one of the houses, we found two rooms where the ceilings were relatively intact to shelter us from the freezing rain and snow. The next day, my mother decided to take me to the river to clean up after our hellish three days journey. In her mind, 
It was a bigger risk to go on so filthy than to be caught by the soldiers guarding us. I was looking forward to feeling clean once again. We went to the river very early in the morning, hoping the soldiers would still be asleep. It was barely light outside. When we got to the water, we were horrified by the gruesome sight that we encountered. Dead bodies and limbs of people and horses and torn up bloody Jewish prayer books and Torah scrolls were scattered all over. Mother somehow mustered up the strength to wash herself and me despite this. On our way back to where the rest of the family was, the soldiers spotted us and started shooting. We both fell to the ground and began crawling. My mother on top of me so the bullets wouldn't hit me. We managed to stumble into a dark cave to hide. After our eyes adapted to the darkness, we saw some writing on the walls in Hebrew. Painted in blood on the stone walls, the writing said, please say Kaddish for the many people who were murdered here. I feel offended and hurt when people talk about all the other camps and Transnistria is rarely, if ever, mentioned. Uh, because for me, and I suppose for other survivors, it is like, like killing us all over again. The Holocaust is always in our background and we will take it to our grave and, uh, and what will happen to our memories after we're gone, only God knows. <laughs> <laughs>